Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a butterfly in graphite. Now the first thing that I want to do is map in my background. Now this was a simple background for this, I just wanted to apply some graphite powder and get a really soft, darker background around the butterfly and the flowers. Now for this I am using a sponge applicator but you could also use some soft tools, either of those would work really well. Now the main aim of this is I want to get a nice smooth transition where I apply a darker graphite around the butterfly and where the flowers are going to be and then I want that to fade out to the lighter white paper on the edges. Now all I'm going to do here is just keep on adding more layers of graphite to darken that up in stages. Now I'm using graphite powder to do my background here and it works really, really well. Now onto the butterfly and you can see here that I have made sure that no graphite powder has come into contact with the butterfly itself. I'm allowing the white of the paper to show through here. Now I recommend to do this whenever you've got any area of a portrait that will need to have some brighter highlights. So let's say you've got a dog portrait on the easel and there's a bright white reflection in the eye. I would draw around that reflection so the white of the paper shows through. You therefore know that you can darken that later in stages if you need to, but you've also got that as bright as required right from the very beginning. Now because there were a few highlights on the wings of the butterfly, I knew I wanted to allow all of the white of the paper for that to show through. And as you can see here, I'm now working with my graphite pencils to apply my graphite in stages. Now the first thing for the butterfly is I wanted to work on the body and I really did want to focus on the tiny, tiny little details. Now this is only a 6 by 10 size portrait so the butterfly in relation to that is quite small but because I'm using the right pencil technique and I'm working with my good contrast and building up my layers gradually I'm able to achieve a real good high level of photorealism. Now to achieve this level of photorealism the layering process is really important. So all of my graphite tutorials on Patreon are uploaded with a voiceover while I'm drawing so there are no sections sped up or cut out and that allows me to explain each process thoroughly. By building up the layering process gradually as I am here, darkening up in stages, I'm then able to easily use my erasers to remove that graphite and add in those lighter markings and tiny hairs. This layering process here, it makes sense because we're drawing what's close to the skin on the butterfly's wing first and then removing those hairs that would be naturally sat on top. Now the only way that we're able to use the erasers effectively is if the graphite that's underneath has been applied in the right way. So if we're really heavy handed with those layers initially it's going to be very hard for our eraser to be able to lift up any kind of graphite. So if you are having a real difficulty with that it's not the erasers necessarily that's having that issue it may be how the graphite's been applied to start with so because of that how i use my pencils and how i work with each individual pencil why i select a specific pencil for that layer all of that is covered in the real time tutorial that there is going to really affect how we can create our highlights the contrast of a portrait is so important now when i talk about contrast it's the values how light or how dark that layer should be if that portrait is flat, it's usually because the contrast isn't right. We need to darken our shadows a bit more and hype up our highlights. That's what makes anything look three-dimensional. That's why graphite portraits still um, can be photorealistic, they can be hyper-realistic, and that there's not any drop of colour at all. It's all in that grayscale medium, but because the contrasts are right, it looks like a black and white photograph. So this here is why I always focus on contrast and if you've seen other tutorials of mine here on YouTube you'll know that I focus on it throughout from start to finish. Now the left side of the butterfly is pretty much done. I've got the hairs on the top section of the wing that I need to add in but because the petals of the flower are behind that section of the wing I need to draw those first. So what I'll be working on is building the right side of the butterfly, getting that finished and then I'm going to come back, work on the flowers because they are naturally behind my main subject and then I can add those tiny little white hairs on the wing and that will help to bring that wing further forward. Now something that I feel is really important in my portraits is getting a good base foundation. So you can see here that although I used graphite powder to start with, I'm now reinforcing that base layer with my graphite pencils. Here only at this stage do I now start focusing on detail. 
Now the reason why I put a lot of focus on the base layer is because that is our foundation for our details. If that's not right, if it's not smooth, it's not well blended and there are harsh start and stop points, almost like it's been rushed, it's very hard to then build up natural details on top. So what I like to do is pay extra attention, you know, give it an extra couple of minutes, make that nice and soft, really focus on that reference photo where your lights and your darks are before you start jumping into details. It really does make a difference to how realistic the finished painting and drawing will look. So I created this tutorial for Patreon so that it's a perfect lesson for any artist who are new to graphite. Quite often, when we're drawing animals with fur, we already have a little bit of a mental block to start with because we think that the reference photo, we think that the drawing is going to be challenging because it contains fur. So I thought a butterfly here would be a perfect lesson to start off with. All of the techniques that we're using here from the shading, the base layers, the pencil technique itself, the contrast, all of that can therefore be applied. It can be practiced during this lesson and then transferred across to another portrait where maybe an animal does have fur. That there enables us to use this as an in-between tutorial and gets us confident with the medium. Now something I speak a lot about in all of my tutorials both here on YouTube and on Patreon is the importance of the position and placement of our highlights and shadows. Now you can see from the drawing, the finished drawing in the corner, how everything around the body of the butterfly on the wings is darker. This is making it look like the wings are attached just below the base of the stomach and the belly area of that butterfly. And as we get to the edges of the wing, everything gets a little bit lighter. That's gonna to help to make it look like the wings are angled up towards the viewer. And the placement of the highlights and shadows is something to pay real close attention to when working on pet portraits. Because of the shift of that placement, it can affect the expression and what that face structure looks like. That there could mean that that pet portrait won't resemble as much like that animal as it should. Now that is something we should be paying attention to regardless of whether or not it's a wildlife subject or a pet. But given that pet portraits, we are often obviously paid for those, they are commissions, we need to be making sure that that is accurate. Okay, so now onto the flower of this portrait and I was really excited for this section of the tutorial for Patreon because it really does focus on a really easy technique but actually for creating quite a complex look. So these flowers I thought were going to be one of the more challenging elements of this portrait but actually it came together far quicker than the butterfly itself. So this is why I wanted to make sure that I had a darker background where the flowers were to start with. So I wanted to be able to remove that graphite in stages and therefore hint at those out of focus petals gradually. And, the, and gradually is really important because the flowers here, some of those were quite out of focus, especially the ones towards the, the back and in the center, they were really quite blurry. So I had to have a real nice balance between detail and then making sure that it still had a softness to it. And to create this, this is where I'm gonna be using a mixture of my blending techniques and my pencils to refine some of that detail and then remove some of that graphite again with my erasers. Now, as you can see here, as I'm working right up close to the butterfly, this is why it was important to not finish the edge of that wing because I'd have to draw around those tiny hairs and you might then end up with something that looks a little bit two dimensional. So by really making sure that I had the flowers in first, I haven't got to worry about all of those tiny little hairs. I can just remove that graphite, add those hairs later on. Now the two flowers that are closer to the wing, you can really see how the top section is far softer. It looks out of focus. And that's there a key about contrast. So I've deliberately not made my highlights too bright on that section of flower and those petals because that would bring it closer to the viewer. Whereas the flower that's in the middle of the wing, that there has brighter highlights on the base and that's gonna help to make it look in focus. Now the one thing in terms of lighting when working on flowers or trees is that you could potentially have bounced light. So usually on a subject you're going to have one main light source, whether or not it's direct face on or from the left or the right. But when you're working on, for instance, let's say you've got a bird in a tree, 
that light source can bounce off of the main trunk and then catch branches in slightly different ways and different angles. So you can see here, as I'm working with my Tombow Mono Eraser, I'm removing some of those highlights. Sometimes they're on the center on the left, and sometimes they might be a little bit more onto the right. And that's because it could be bouncing off of other flowers or other groupings of petals. So the light source on the flower may not always follow the main light source on the subject. There are also going to always be exceptions, but really do study that reference photo closely. So I really do hope that the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up, it makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week, so if you'd like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. As I've mentioned, if you would like to draw along to this real-time tutorial, it's available on Patreon. I'll link all of that in the description below. You do get the reference photo liner and full material list. It's a really great lesson for any artist new to graphite. If you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.